Hello friends, as far as prevalence is concerned, premature ejaculation is as common as common cold and believe me, it's a global phenomenon. Whatever is depicted on the pornographic screen as a rule is exaggerated to such an extent that it only spreads the wrong ideas about that beautiful word sex. The main problem with men is that they are always in a denial mode and it's a common belief that their whole manlyhood depends on it. Well, sex is not only about lasting longer, it's all about fulfillment and how to derive it from the act is an art. Well, you need not be worrying about it any longer. I'm Dr. Nand Kishore again and in this installment, I'm going to take care of all your self-doubts regarding premature ejaculation. If you haven't watched my earlier videos on erectile dysfunction, please do so because both the conditions might coexist. I'm sure after watching this full video, you will never be the same. Let us see how the patient presents to a doctor, how to diagnose the condition, how to investigate and then how to manage. Let us start. How the patient approaches a doctor. Malaysia and his wife entered the clinic with an anxiety strewn all over their faces. Nobody wanted to start a talk. They were looking at each other with that emptiness in the eyes. When I asked Malaysia again, he opened his mouth for the first time. Looking down, shoulder drooping, as if a person who had just lost a battle. Doctor, I just do not know how to put it. I'm feeling very weak. We are married for the last 15 days now, but we just couldn't have proper sex. I get the erection all right, but even before I could insert my organ inside, it's all over. This has been happening every day. Every time we plan of having a good sex and create a mood for it, and every time I fail, doctor, please help me. It was an emergency call. It was as if his whole life was suspended on it and he was expecting someone to fill that void. Malaysia had a condition which statistically one in three men has. Premature ejaculation or early orgasmic response as an eminent sexologist in Mumbai would prefer to call it. The condition is addressable. What is premature ejaculation or PME as is commonly called? PME is when ejaculation happens sooner than a man or his partner would like during sex. It can be frustrating if it makes sexual act less enjoyable and generates relationship conflicts. When should you be worried? As long as it happens not so frequently, it shouldn't be a cause for concern. However, you might be diagnosed with premature ejaculation if you always ejaculate within no time after penetration. You are unable to delay ejaculation during intercourse all of the time, feel distressed and frustrated, and as a result, tend to avoid sexual intimacy. Malesh did a right thing by approaching a doctor before relationship conflicts set in and before he started avoiding sexual intimacy. And here is the most important lesson. An understanding partner is the first requisite if you want to come out of this pit. PME has two phases. One is emission, the other being expulsion. In emission, sperms move from the testicles to the prostate and mix with seminal fluid to make semen. In expulsion, the muscles at the base of the penis contract. This forces semen out of the penis. Expulsion and orgasm usually coincide. Some men get orgasm without ejaculation. The penis loses its hardness after expulsion. Erectile dysfunction and PME can coexist. It's essential to differentiate between the two. If a person had ED, then his ED should be treated first. 
the problem is when to know that there is a problem. PME is a relative phenomenon. What one person feels is short, another might feel it sufficiently long. There are people who have timed it and tried to classify it as per the IELT, that is intravaginal ejaculatory latency time. Sex is not about setting standards as per time. It's about how one enjoys it. As per the people who set the clock, less than three minutes is PME. But then there are instances when you can have IELT of 45 minutes and still you can leave your partner high and dry. And there are people who last for less than three minutes and are fully satisfied with their act. Should it mean that PME should not be treated? No, absolutely not. He surely requires counselling. Detailed history taking is important. That would tell you the trigger point for the existing situation. One should find out how his feelings are affecting his overall psyche. Is it really driving him and his partner towards anxiety, depression and distress? It can be frustrating if it makes sex less enjoyable and impacts relationships. Merely counselling these couples together can solve the problems for both of them. How to diagnose PME? You need to ask him some direct questions and expect in turn real answers. Your whole diagnosis depends on it. The doctor needs to imbibe in him sufficient confidence to get the real answers. What is the frequency with which it happens? Since when he has noticed this problem? What is his experience with another person, if there is any? Does it happen with every attempt at sex? What kind of sexual activity does he engage in and how often? That is foreplay, masturbation, intercourse, etc. How has PME affected his sexual activity? How is his personal relationship with his partner? Is there anything like drugs or alcohol that makes PME worse or better? Remember, these are all open-ended questions and we require elaborative and frank answers to them. Here are certain things to remember. Age is of no relevance. It can occur at any age. Erectile dysfunction and stress should be ruled out. Job loss, corporate stress are the main causes and rule out hypertension. Diagnosis doesn't involve much of lab investigations, but certain risk factors should be ruled out. Get CBC to rule out anemia, blood sugar to rule out diabetes, and lipid profile to rule out dyslipidemia. Coming to the most important part, treatment. 1. Treat the organic cause if you feel it exists. 2. Individual and couple counselling. First failure generally weighs on mind. Counselling can help erase those unwanted memories. The most compelling part of the couple counselling is to stress the importance of knowing the erogenous zones of the partner, importance of foreplay and importance of having sensuous talks. Gradually, leading and pacing, a counsellor would be able to guide the couple properly to reach their goal. It requires patience. Number three is cognitive behavioural therapy. CBT is a talking therapy that can help you manage your problems by changing the way you think and behave. It is most commonly used to treat anxiety and depression but can be useful to tackle the performance anxiety. Fourth is start and stop and squeeze technique, generally with women in top position. With this method, your partner stimulates your penis until you are close to ejaculation. When you are close, your partner stops and firmly squeezes your penis so your excitement partly goes away. The goal for you is to find out that exact point from where you could return and then continue the activity. Then you can better control and delay climax on your own with practice. These are the methods suggested by Masters and Johnson in 1970s. The present day therapist hardly used that method. Fifth is pelvic floor exercises, commonly called as Kegel's exercises. 
they can strengthen the pelvic floor muscles which support the bladder and bowel and affect sexual functions. First you have to learn to identify the muscles. If you practice stopping and restarting urinary flow during urination, you can easily identify and in practice their contractions and relaxations. Apart from this, one can also use numbing cream and sprays, xylocaine gel or cream, not of much use. They take away the sensations and a natural enjoyment. And lastly, the condoms. Idea is to reduce the sensations. Coming to the drugs. Drugs are always to be used as supportive to psychological counseling. Antidepressants. A side effect of certain antidepressants is delayed orgasm. Certain SSRIs are used for PME. For example, sertraline, paroxetine, fluoxetine. The real game changer though is dipoxetine. In fact, it's the first drug of choice to delay ejaculation. And the beauty is it has a propensity to act on emergency basis, meaning thereby that it can be given just before the sexual act to prolong ejaculatory response. It is generally used in combination with PDE5 inhibitors as both the conditions PME and ED seemingly coexist many a times. Then you have analgesics like tramadol has a side effect of delaying ejaculation. Certain alpha blockers like celodosin, tamsulosin generally given for prostate enlargement they can help delaying ejaculation. PDE5 inhibitors drugs used for erectile dysfunction like sildenafil, tadalafil and verdenafil can delay ejaculation. To summarize, premature ejaculation is not a disease, it's a state of mind. Every man has to go through it, generally in the initial stage of his sexual life. Those who are in denial are apparently lying. During this period, they require an assurance that nothing much is wrong with them. To get that confidence back, they require psychological counseling along with a little help from SSRIs. I know men who without much help from drugs eventually found the answers to their problem and then they were laughing at themselves, wondering as to how they found themselves in that situation. It's like a car driving. It seems difficult when you are learning to drive without much ado you become an expert in it after some time. By the way, what Mallesh needed was just a little assurance. With counseling and a little help from SSRI, he is back to his own self. There is no reason why you shouldn't if you are suffering from it. If you have any questions for me, put them in a comment box. I will make it a point to answer them. Again a gentle reminder. If you haven't watched my video on erectile dysfunction, kindly watch them. The links are in the description box. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and share it. In case you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do it. Thank you.